Join me as I spend the next few weeks going through Snoop Dogg's cookbook and cooking every recipe. I bought this cookbook about two weeks ago, but I haven't really looked at it yet. I mean, I've flipped through it a little bit. Martha Stewart writes the opening. She says, Working with Snoop in the kitchen has been a remarkable learning experience for me. Not only has he taught me new lingo and cultural references, he surprised me with his unique cooking techniques and recipes. I can't wait for him to share them with the world in this fun, one-of-a-kind cookbook. Snoop Dogg goes on to talk about how food on the road is hit or miss at best. Combine that with the dog not being the most adventurous and free Bourdain type when it comes to grub. Doesn't always make for the most splendid of occasions. You dig? He says, one thing's for sure, two things for certain. A dog's got to eat, and one way or another, we make it happen. Whether that's getting creative with some backstage vittles, or remaking and remixing that one recipe I picked up on the road when I'm back at the crib. From breakfast goodies to late night munchies, there's just enough of my stash to make sure that you're covered no matter the occasion. I've cooked from a few cookbooks. Like, not a ton, but a few. I can throw together some chicken, some steak, some pasta, some sauce, some spices, make it look good, make it taste good. Mostly, I just kind of go with my gut as far as that goes. When I get home from work at the end of the day, I don't always want to stand in the kitchen and make dinner. So a lot of the time, what it comes down to is just grabbing whatever I've got and throwing something together really quick. Mac and cheese out of a box, hamburger helper, hot dogs, whatever. I think I'm going to really enjoy working out of Snoop Dogg's cookbook. The vibe that I'm getting is that he is admittedly not a celebrity chef. He says it right here not being the most adventurous Anthony Bourdain type when it comes to grub. When he's at the mercy of whatever's available when he's out on the road, he just kind of throws it together. And over the years, he's developed a cooking technique that Martha Stewart talked about in the introduction. That's the vibe that I'm getting. And I can relate to that because when I don't want to cook dinner at the end of the day, I just want to grab whatever there is and throw it together. I think I'm going to really enjoy working out of Stoop's cookbook. I'm really excited to see what he's got in store. One of the things I found really interesting the first time I opened this cookbook was Snoop shares with us what he keeps in his kitchen. In his pantry, and he itemizes it, and in his refrigerator, and he itemizes it. The first thing on Snoop's list is lemon pepper. He says, I can't handle no bland chicken, so I like to throw a little lemon pepper on my wings. Shout out to my man Rick Ross. He knows what's up with that lemon pepper. You can't go wrong with that McCormick brand. Gotta make sure to get McCormick. Number two, seasoning salt. He says, let me sprinkle you with a little game right quick. Seasoning salt is a blend of paprika, turmeric, onion, and garlic. I didn't know that. I had to check the ingredients, and sure enough, it says salt, sugar, spices, including paprika and turmeric, onion, cornstarch, garlic, extractives of paprika and natural flavor. He says it's a classic you can add to anything. In the Boss Dog's kitchen, the pantry wouldn't be complete without it. Splurge a little and get you some of that Lowry's. I made sure to get Lowry's. Number three, hot sauce. He says, I'm down with all kinds of sauces, as you can see, but hot sauce has got to be the most essential. Now, everybody's got their favorite brand, but the dog's got a thing for Crystal. I guess that's the brand. I've never heard of that brand before. That's Louisiana's finest right there. A splash of that goes with anything. You can put it in a sandwich, on some chicken, on top of a pizza. Whatever you add it to, it's going to kick it up a notch. I looked, and I couldn't find any Crystal brand hot sauce. But he says that's Louisiana's finest. So I got Louisiana brand. Number four, maple syrup. 
and you know how much I love maple syrup. Snoop says, it wouldn't be the breakfast of champions without maple syrup. Whether you got some pork on your fork or a stack of pancakes, nothing tops it all off like a stick of butter and some warm maple syrup. Let that Aunt Jemima soak in and then prepare to get your chow on. Now Snoop uses Aunt Jemima, which is fine, but I'm really, really picky about my maple syrup. So I only use organic Vermont maple syrup. Number five, soy sauce. Traveling the world put me onto a lot of fine Asian cuisines. Noodles, rices, sushi, and a whole lot more. Nothing goes better with that egg fried rice or sashimi than some soy sauce. You can go ahead and mix it with some of that wasabi too. Just keep that ratio right or your sinuses will be acting crazy. He doesn't say what brand he uses, but I wouldn't with Kika Man. Number six, honey. He says, ain't nothing more important to the top dog than his vocal cords, and as a live performer, I gotta keep those in tip-top shape. A couple veterans in the game taught me the key to keeping your vocal right is some fresh honey and warm tea. I've kept the honey on deck ever since. I like that raw and unfiltered honey, because I'm raw and unfiltered my damn self. Again, he doesn't say what brand he uses, but I decided to get Northwest because it's local. I'm in the Pacific Northwest. Number seven, tuna fish. He labels it just tuna. Whether you're mixing it up with some mayo or grilling it in a bomb tuna melt, a can of this stuff will never steer you wrong. I'm also trying to keep my diet right, especially now that I'm going hard in the yard with my gym reg regimen. Fish is meant to be real good for you, so I get mine from some tuna. Again, he doesn't list a brand, but I got Starkest because it's kind of a name brand. It says, I'm trying to keep my diet right, especially now that I'm going hard in the yard with my gym regimen. I go to the gym one day a week. I want to start going a second day. I'm sure Snoop goes more often than that. But he says, I'm trying to keep my diet right. And that's something that I've been thinking about too, eating right. I'm not quite to the point of counting calories, but reading that is one more thing that has turned me on to this. Number eight. Ketchup. He says, I love to get down on the grill, and what barbecue is complete without ketchup? Picture that. Burgers, hot dogs, sausages, and no ketchup to smother on top. Just some meat and a dry-ass bun. Not the dog's household. Keep the ketchup close and make sure it's Heinz. Don't cheat yourself. Treat yourself. So, I made sure to get Heinz ketchup. Number nine. Instant macaroni and cheese. He says, homemade mac and cheese is always going to be the ultimate, but sometimes you need the quick fix. If you ain't prepared to wait for that made-from-scratch mac to simmer and bake, reach for that craft and pull out a pot. Boom, you got some cheesy goodness in a matter of minutes. Instant macaroni and cheese is definitely what we're having for dinner, at least a few nights a month. Number 10, also a personal favorite of mine, Pop-Tarts. He says... I say they're for my kids or for my grandson when he stops by. I don't have grandkids, at least not yet. But I enjoy one of these toasted treats once in a while. They got every flavor under the sun these days, but I say keep it original and get chocolate fudge. Sometimes you gotta stick with the classics, you dig? I'm a little ashamed to admit that I've never tried chocolate fudge Pop-Tarts. Next he talks about what's in his fridge. Number one, Eggs. Eggs are good anyway. Scrambled with some cheese, fried in a sandwich, or in one of my chronic omelets. If you got a salt shaker handy, you can even boil that thing. Now that will leave you highly satisfied. Number two. Cheddar cheese. He says, I done came a long way from eating that government issued cheese, but I remember it well. I'll still mess around and throw some cheddar in some of my cooking. One way or another, Big Snoop Dogg is all about getting that cheese. He doesn't say what brand he uses, but I always opt for Tillamook. Always have. Number three, milk. He says, remember in Friday when my man Cube ran out of milk and had to put water on his cereal? I've actually never seen Friday. That's never happening in my household. I keep the milk on the deck since I'm always ready for a big bowl of Snoop Sloops. 
I wonder if that's what he calls Fruit Loops. Miss me with that almond or soy milk. I like mine it's ice cold. Skim or 2% is just fine. I always opt for 2%. Always have. Dang it! Forgot the ranch dressing. Whatever, it's fine. He says, another condiment of choice. I'm starting to adapt to eating vegetables and salads and all that, but I'm gonna need some ranch to give all those greens some extra flavor. That creamy dressing is exactly what I need to make all that plant food a little more tasteful. As far as what kind, Hidden Valley is the way to go. Their ranch is real cool and smooth, a little something like yours truly. You know, I've never liked ranch dressing. I used to know people who would eat it on everything. Pizza, tater tots, everything. I like it on salad. I like it with the greens. And Hidden Valley, as far as that goes, has always been my favorite. I'm starting to wonder if Snoop and I are on more similar wavelengths than I knew. Number five, dill pickles. He says, what comes with every deli sandwich you've ever seen? That pickle, Jack. Whether it's pastrami piled high or classic roast beef, you know you gotta have that pickle on the side. The same is true when I make one of my Caribbean Queen Cubanos at home. I like to throw that pickle on there to complete the whole thing. He doesn't specify a brand. The two brands we have at the grocery store where I go are Vlasic and Nally. So I got Nally. And he also doesn't say if he gets full size, baby, spheres. I was debating whether or not to get spheres or whole pickles, but I decided to meet myself halfway and get baby bills. Number six, barbecue sauce. I can do without ranch dressing, can't do without barbecue sauce. He says, I like to helm the grill once in a while and get my Iron Chef on. Another essential component of any barbecue is this sauce. Whether you're marinating your meat in it or just throwing a dollop on top, barbecue sauce gives you that sweet, tangy taste you can't get enough of. The best sauce out there, you ask? Well, you're gonna have to holler at my Uncle Rio about that. Please believe Rio's ribs held it down with the finest sauce in the land. I'm not clear on whether Uncle Rio is a brand or if Snoop Dogg actually has an Uncle Rio. There's a hundred different options for barbecue sauce out there. I decided to go with Sweet Baby Ray's. Going back to what he said about Crystal being Louisiana's finest, Sweet Baby Ray's seemed like a safe bet. Number seven, mustard. He says, no, I'm not talking about my producer partner, mustard on the beef. I'm talking about that Heinz mustard, that French's mustard, that mellow yellow. It's another condiment you gotta have, you understand me? Mustard also sets my OG fried bologna off just right. It ain't complete without it. So my two options for bands are Heinz and French's. But since we already got Heinz ketchup, I decided to match it with Heinz mustard. Number eight is Moet Champagne. And if you know me, you know I don't drink. So I didn't get any champagne. He says, sometimes you just gotta embrace that rap star lifestyle. I like to enjoy a glass of bubbly now and then, and when I do, I gotta have the best. That's why I keep a bottle of Moet chill. I stay ready to get it poppin'. Number nine, orange juice. He says, I'm a kinda on my little health kick right now, and drawn more to the green variety. But hey, you know there ain't nothing like OJ. We have to keep a jug of this at play at all times. You never know when you might need to mix it with some Moet, or better yet, gin. Yeah, you saw that one coming, right? Number 10, butter. He says, the key to all good cooking, butter and lots of it. I'm not talking about that low fat vegetable spread. I'm talking about that real deal holy field that's churned and yellow and ready to sizzle on the pan. A stick or two is always gonna be found at Snoop's spot. I'm not clear, I don't know, if Holyfield is a brand or if that's some sort of terminology that I'm not familiar with, but either way, there's no Holyfield butter at the grocery store where I go. So I decided to go with Dairy Gold. He says, 
a stick or two is always going to be found at Spook's spot. A stick or two. They did have Tillamook butter, and I wanted to get the Tillamook, but the Tillamook butter came in a big block. This comes in four little sticks. And since he's specific about a stick or two, I decided to go with the berry gold. Next week we're going to make some breakfast and we're going to start with the smoothie. The smoothie with a V. The smoothie. The smoothie.